Hey everyone. Well, this will be on YouTube. Um, sorry. There's somebody parked in the parking lot over here across from me. And they keep opening and slamming their truck door. <laughs> and it's kind of freaking me out. I don't know what they're doing. Um, it's somebody that works here in town. And I was going to walk over there to the bathrooms, but they're parked like right outside the women's bathroom door, and it's kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Not that I think they would do anything, you know, but it's just kind of, it's kind of off-putting and embarrassing to walk past somebody to go into the ladies' room, and they keep opening and closing their door. It's kind of like, what's their deal? Are they on their lunch break? Anyway, I wanted to come back and make this real quick. Um, I was speaking earlier in the last video that I made. And I, I spoke about AKD saying she was going to take CMC to church. And as as a Christian, uh, the Christian people or anybody of any kind of religion, their thoughts are especially Christian, is to bring people to God, or to bring God to people, to teach people about Christ, to um, encourage people to go to church to learn about Christ. And that's probably what AKD intended. And that's a good thing. It's a good thing to go to church if you believe in that stuff. If you don't, I'm not here to say you should or shouldn't do whatever, um, whatever your religion might be. Um, but her intentions were probably good in saying that she was going to take CMC to church. And let me tell you something before anybody starts saying, she doesn't need to be going to church. There are many drug addicts and alcoholics and fornicators and uh, abusers of, of many different things sitting in church every week. And uh, what is this guy doing now? That's the place where people go to try to cleanse themselves of those thoughts. They go there to try to get some type of encouragement, you know, mentally and, and emotionally. And um, some people go because it's what others want them to do, their spouse or their parent, whatever the case may be. But to speak about that, I would say this to AKD. Um. CMC would go to church if you took her she would go and she would sit there and she would praise God and she would she would quote the scripture that she's heard in her lifetime because like I've said many times and I will repeat this uh, to make my point <laughs> narcissists know how to mimic just like I said I will repeat this narcissists know how to mimic they, they learn how to mimic the behavior and the thoughts systems of other people around them. Um, there are many clergy people out there who are fake. We see these televangelists who are fake. But they're, they're making mad money and they're not going to give it up. Um, they, they don't... Uh, they can study the Bible and they can study the, the scripture and they can study different other teachers of, of religion and, and learn how to come across to their congregation but they're not holy and they're not authentic and there are people in church who aren't either but you know I'm not saying people shouldn't go if that's what you want to do um, but CMC would go to church and she would put on this act of finding God and, and how she was um, going to change her ways and how she was going to and we even saw something I noticed of course I can't comment on anything right now but I noticed when she had made this post someone shared it in one of the awareness pages this morning about um, certain about I, I think she's still harping on this lady who said that she um said her daughter dying was karma 
and that this lady has is now raising her daughter's three children and CMC made the comment or oh, you're probably getting plenty of money getting paid and now CMC's she's hyper focused on that that's what narcissists do they become hyper focused on something uh, especially if it's something that they can't prove or control the narrative and so she's hyper focused on finding that and beating everybody else to the punch to prove herself right or to remove it you know and she probably did find it and she probably did remove it maybe somebody out there got it on screen recording but uh, what I was getting at was you can tell an art you can take a narcissist to church and they'll come out knowing more about God and the, and, and religion than everybody else sitting in there you can take them to uh, a bar and all of a sudden they know everything there is to know about alcohol and about the, the line dancing or <laughs> the music on the jukebox or whatever. They learn how to control the area. They learn how to control the room. And they learn how to mimic other people. So she could go to church a couple of times and come home. And we've all seen it happen. We've all seen her. All of a sudden she's going to become religious. She needs this Bible. She needs somebody to send her a Bible. She sleeps with a Bible. What is sleeping with a Bible going to do? Is it going to like um, put the words in your mind as you're sleeping? The words are going to come off the page and soak into your brain. Sleeping with a Bible is about like sleeping with a, a shoe. You know, it's not going to make you a runner. Um, but I just wanted to come back and speak on that because I, I had intended to speak on that earlier and I got in the maze and I got twisted and turned around started talking about something else like I often do. But um, I don't know. I, 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 I want to speak on these couple of subjects here. Just the, this what went on over the weekend. And then I'm going to move on from it because... Like I said, you can lead a horse to water, but, uh, you know, um, p people tried to lead me. They tried to lead me away from the narcissist, and I wouldn't listen. It wasn't until I finally started to see it for myself. And I wanted to speak on this. This is an example that I'm going to give. My windows are fogged up, so I'm going to turn my turn my defroster on because everything's starting to fog up it's real windy and cold and rainy today but um, excuse me for just a minute while I'm watching these people out here in the parking lot I, I'm still here I'm just kind of watching to see what they're doing Um, it was brought to my attention recently, and I don't mean to continue to harp on other people's lives. And by lives, I don't mean live on Facebook lives. I mean actual life. But uh, I probably spoke about this. Some of you may have watched a video where I spoke about this. Um, when, I, when I was speaking earlier about how abuse victims will return to their abuser, Again and again, I gotta turn some defrost up. My windows are shut all the way. Something's causing. I can't really see the sky back here behind me. It's got like a trailer. I'm trying to back up, and get around him. I hope he sees me, cause if he don't, he's gonna back right into me. I'm gonna pull over here and get away from these people. I don't know what they're they're doing. They might be doing an AKD CMC situation. I don't want to be around. But um, um, okay, I've talked about my ex and how he, after the two of us, after things ended, he went back to the one that he had a child with. And he hoovered me, contacted me, and, and tried to meet up with me and try to spend time with me on average. I would say over the course of the next two and a half years, 
at least five times and uh, I would I would give in and I would talk to him I would text with him and I would talk to him and I would find myself laughing and, and remember the good times and stuff and then he would pull some stunt and he would he would say something or behave in some way that would stop me dead in my tracks and remind me of the bad times and it took that many times of this happening before I started to figure out there was something not right about him. And I started to Google certain things. And I came to figure out about him being a narcissist. And that's when I really got to start to study and, and trying to learn about narcissism. And I, I still don't know the, all there is to know. Nobody ever will know all there is to know about a narcissist. Because, like I was saying, they mimic people. One, like, I had this friend who dated this man, and he was like this biker guy. He wore torn jeans and boots and, you know, kind of like an Ed type, you know. Um, and then he got together with her, and all of a sudden he started to transition. And he started to wear loafers, and he started to wear polo shirts. And he cut his hair, and he trimmed himself up, and... He would. He looked like if you saw him and didn't know anything about him, you would think that he was just average um, soccer dad in the suburbs, you know. And, and he would transition himself in whatever the situation was. He would, he would kind of change and and conform, and and it was a form of mimicking what the person he was with at that time wanted him to be. And he didn't mind to behave the way that they wanted him to behave or wear the types of clothes that they wanted him to wear because he was getting something out of it. You know, he, he was getting uh, the supply that he sought, the money, and was being things were being bought for him. That's what narcissists do. They transition. But they're still a narcissist. They never, they never really change under the surface. They always have an agenda. So she can get on Facebook and she can stop. She can type her words out and, and leave out cuss words and use words like doo-doo or whatever. But we all know under the surface she's the same manipulative control freak who is going to come across as this sweet lady who's changed her ways and, and, and is apologetic even though she's not. I've said this and I'll scream this until the day that they put me in the ground. A narcissist never takes ownership for their wrongdoing. They never, if someone points out something that they're doing wrong, and people do this to CMC on a daily basis, they're always in defense mode. Well, I didn't say that. I didn't do that. I didn't say these things. Um... But it was brought to my attention. Okay, let me let me kind of step back a, a second. And if you go to my YouTube channel, some of my videos I talked about, some of my videos are still unpublished. They're they're hidden, and I may open those back up in time. Uh, if people are interested, I would encourage anybody who does come to my YouTube to start with the playlist "My Relationship with a Narcissist" and learn about how I came to meet him and, and become involved with him. And I don't go into a whole lot of like detail as far as like we met here and we, we went here and we did this. I talk mostly in general about the steps of a narcissistic relationship. The targeting is the first step. They pick somebody out and they say, that person looks like somebody that I could get something over on. That person looks like somebody who I could play with for a while. If it's a man and a woman, they might just look at the other person as somebody they could have some fun with for a while in, in, in terms of sex or, you know, or maybe even to um, just kind of like get a name that they're spending time with that person because that person may be well liked and well respected and it would, it would kind of give them an opportunity to to show a side of themselves to other people that, you know, if this person believes in me, then I must not be as bad as everybody says. 
and then they will start to groom you and love bomb you and etc. And um, so anyway, he after I stopped having anything to do with him, and I stopped talking to him. Because he would lie to me and he would tell me that him and this other woman were no longer together and that they had split up. Then I would find out he was lying and I would call him on it. And he would say, well, you know, we're just living together because of our child. And we just, you know, that's all it is. It's, and that's what narcissists will always say. But I found out not long after the last time that I spoke to him, I found out within just a few short weeks later that he had left this woman and had got married to someone else. And recently, I may have spoken about this in some of my videos, I found out through mutual friends on Facebook, just by chance, that I saw this woman commenting on a mutual friend's post about getting divorced and um, not being able to trust this man and things. So she didn't use his name, but I know who she was speaking about. And I've never spoken to any of these people about my having known him or having been involved with him. So if she knows that about me, she knows it through him, which I highly doubt. But it was brought to my attention a while back, just within the last probably three or four days, um, we have this mutual friend who's going through a very rough time right now, health-wise. And everybody's, all the women in her little circle of friends has all kind of been encouraging her and coming to her page and leaving little notes and things. And this other woman, the, the, the wifey of Narcissist, um, has been doing the same thing. And I've noticed some of her posts, and I noticed recently that she had gone back to using the last name again, which she had dropped, and I clicked on her page out of, in, out of curiosity that killed the cat, because <laughs> we're not supposed to, uh, we're not supposed to stay connected to these people in any way, we're supposed to go completely no contact in order to heal from all that, but I did notice that she had taken the name back again. So I went and looked, and um, she um, probably like dropped the name again within like one day. And this is the process. He had moved out. They had split up. I don't know if they got divorced or not, but they were they were talking to them like they had, and. Um, now they're kind of like on that fence, you know, of getting back together. And maybe she's so embarrassed by the stuff that she posted on Facebook about having been cheated on, caught his, you know, things from his phone that she found and stuff like that, that she's embarrassed to admit that she's taking him back again. And she's not the only woman that I see this happen to, and men as well. But I, I was kind of like, I was like, okay, she's free from him. I don't, you know, it was like I was breathing a sigh of relief for her. And then I find out she's back involved with him again. And I'm like, okay, she's not got there yet. You know, she's not seen enough abuse and damage from him yet to, to um, finally walk away for good. And she, this may go on in her life for several more years. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because this is the pattern of a relationship with a narcissist. Had I not been, um, at, at, during the last part of the time that he last was over me, last texting me and talking to me, had I not gotten involved with the man I'm with now, and had I not started um, working on that relationship, I may have been available to the narcissist, and I may have ended up back in that same place as this woman, because um, had I been fully single, and he had walked away and left this woman, and he was telling me that during the last time that he was over me, 
you know, um, it's over for good. I'm, I'm leaving for good this time. Um, I can't stop thinking about you. I wish things had worked out between us. What if we try to give it another go and stuff like that? And I was just not... By this time, I had learned that he was a narcissist. I had figured all that out. So I was no way at all interested in putting myself back in that place. So I think she probably hasn't figured him out yet fully. She's still believing the lies, you know. Or she's still holding on uh, and grasping. Because a lot of people get cheated on and go back. That doesn't make that person a narcissist, but I guarantee you that if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, you are being cheated on. Now, it may not be um, cheating in a... I'm watching this lady. She's hanging up costumes outside this Superman and a Mario and a um, Thor. I wonder if those belong to somebody if they're selling them. I could go over there and take a picture of them and ask her about them. <laughs> anyway, that's just the pattern of narcissism and of being in a relationship with a narcissist. And it's not just men and women or, or couples. It's friendships, too. Very often we get involved with people as friends and we... Um, have a falling out as, as we call it we you know we get into an argument or we have a disagreement and we go back and we pick back up that doesn't mean that that person's a narcissist a narcissist is someone who abuses you in such a way that you feel so down about yourself and you feel so used and they only call you or come around when they're bored or when they want something and um you continue to allow yourself to be used and, and, and jerked around. And it takes a while to get to that place. Because they're going to come back with the sweetness and the kindness and the, you know, what ifs. And, and, and like I said, had I been single and willing to give it another go with him, I could be in her shoes right now. And I thank God every day that I'm not. I thank God every day that I, um, not just that I was involved with somebody else, but that I had enough insight and enough care and, and um, control and love for myself and love for my health to um, put myself first and say, no, I, I don't, I can't do it. And, and she'll get there. He took the other one, the other woman before me, she stayed involved with this man for probably close to 20 years, on and off, on and off, back and forth, back and forth, because she continued to buy into it, and because they shared a child, and maybe she wanted the extra help, the, you know, financial help, because he did work, he did have a really good job, so it wasn't like he was a lazy bum just taken from her. But the thing about it is, is that this this woman now, the new woman, the current woman, posted not long ago that he he took practically everything she had when he left. He he took everything from the home and left her. You know, even took the towels and things, which he did the same thing to me. I had bought towels and rugs and stuff for the house that we lived in together, and when I moved. He packed all my stuff up for me and brought it to my mom's house. He didn't bring all the stuff that I had bought, all the new stuff. And some end tables that I had that I ended up losing. He did pay me for them. I, I insisted that. And because he had already told the other woman that he was, his, his child's mom had been coming back into the home after I had moved out and had already seen the tables, and he had given her some lie about where they came from. And I told him I demanded them back, and he said, well, why don't I just buy them off of you? And I agreed to do that, so <laughs> I got paid for them at least. But I'm going to end this now. I just wanted to come back and talk about that. You can take a narcissist to church. You can take them to the rodeo. You can, you know, 
You can take them any place you want to take them. They're going to go and they're going to act like they're in having a great time and then they're enjoying themselves and they're loving every minute of it. But the truth is, is they're just mimicking your behavior. They're, they're, they're mirroring you and they are doing this to please you in order to control you. And I know you might not agree with that, but when it happens to you and you figure it out, you will say, okay, I, I, maybe I, they were right. Everybody, thanks for watching and have a great day.